Hi, I'm Hugh from SRI and uh, we'd like to show you how to change the column and clean the injector liner on your SRI GC. So this is the SRI 8610 gas chromatograph and this is the column oven. You can see that in the column oven there is currently a column connected between the injector and the detector. So if we wanted to disassemble this we take and remove the septum nut. Now this could be hot if you just turn the GC off so don't burn yourself so take a tool, a socket wrench or something and remove the septum nut along with the septum that's inside. Then use a pair of pliers or some kind of tool again because this could be hot and take the injector liner out and put it someplace safe where ugh, it can cool off. So the column now is connected to the inside of the injector. So I'm taking my 7 16 wrench and I'll loosen the nut and ferrule that hold the column and then remove the column from the injector. Same on the detector side. Loosen the swage lock nut. Could be hot, so be careful if it is and then pull the column out and now the column is completely clear. So Examine inside the injector. You should be able to see daylight all the way through. So put a flashlight or something on the inside and you should be able to see a hole all the way through the injector. What sometimes happens is that when you take the column out, the nut which holds the column in place has something inside of the nut called a graphite ferrule. The graphite ferrule looks something like this when it's brand new. However, if the ferrule has been over tightened, half of the ferrule sometimes breaks off and remains stuck in the fitting on the inside of the injector. So if that's the case, you need to find some kind of little tool, a little dentist pick works really great, to um, poke into that soft graphite ferrule and then pry it out. So it should be, you, you should be able to, to feel that the fitting is not clogged up with any kind of graphite ferrule from the previous installation. Also check in the oven and make sure that no pieces of graphite ferrule have fallen to the bottom of the oven. Sometimes what can happen is a big chunk of graphite falls off into the bottom of the oven and then rolls into the oven heater element which of course causes it to short out and get damaged. So just pay attention, make sure that there's no debris in the bottom of the oven. So now to, to clean the injector liner, this is what the injector liner looks like. And um, we actually have two different types of injector liners, two different inside diameters. One looks like this, the other looks like that. They're both exactly the same length. And they both have either a hole or a gash in one end. The gash end has to be out toward the operator. The hole end has to be out toward the operator. So to clean the liner, it, it may not be necessary to clean. It, it's not really a clear-cut decision whether it's necessary to clean the liner or not. But first of all, you should be able to look forward, look through it, and see that it doesn't have any debris or anything in there. If it does, get some kind of a brush. Here I've got a, a little brush that we sometimes give out that's about the right size so that you can brush any debris out of the liner. If It's probably a good idea if you've been making many injections to put the liner in some kind of a solvent, something that you think will dissolve whatever it is you have been injecting. So methanol might be a good choice or maybe some stronger solvent, uh, whatever you happen to have on hand, but methanol is a good choice, so let it soak for a while, give it a couple more strokes on the, the cleaning brush, and then hopefully it's clean and ready to go again. So, to put the column back in, it's important to understand what this injector looks like on the inside. So, what it looks like on the inside is Oops, got that in backwards. Just finished telling you to put the hole toward the outside. So the um, the body of the injector looks like basically just a barrel. This one is what it looks like in reality. This one has had the, the metal cut away so that you can see on the inside. So the septum nut holds the liner in place and there's a, a, a little um, cone-shaped 
feature there on the inside of the septum nut that matches up with the cone-shaped receptacle on the inside of the liner, and that's what makes the seal when the septum pushes on it. So the column position is, is important in this. So the way we like to connect the column is to take the column and put it into the injector, and then the, the correct position for the column is just at the mouth of that kind of conical feature. So it turns out that since you can't see that in reality, the best way to find it is to have some kind of a tool that fits into the injector like that so that you can feel when the column is at the bottom because you can push this tool down and wherever it stops the column is perfectly positioned. So to do that on the GC, you take the column and connect it into the injector and push it all the way through if you want, so it'll, it'll just come right out the front. And then pull it back and take your pusher tool. We don't always give you a pusher tool because we figure you can find some kind of a tool like this lying around. This one happens to be a 732nd hex wrench. So when I, um, when I push on this, I think I pushed it a little too far. There we go. Okay. So, I can feel it now when I'm when I'm pushing this way the column goes that way, when I push this way the tool goes out. So, wherever that tool bottoms out, that's the correct position for the column. And then you tighten it, tighten it up. Now the nut should be tight enough that the column can't move even if you pull it as hard as you can. It should be really tight, but not so tight that you damage this soft graphite ferrule. So then the liner goes back in with the little hole pointing toward the outside. Nut, it's probably a good idea to put in a new rubber septum. This is what they look like when you buy them. They're about a dollar a piece, 9.5 millimeter green septa from Restec is what we use. And then tighten it up finger tight. And we're done on the injector side. On the detector side, we're going to allow about an inch or so of column projecting out of the nut. And we stick that into the, this case, the flame ionization detector and tighten the nut again. Make sure the column can't move. And that's really all there is to it. So the, the column normally fits into a nut that has a graphite ferrule already inserted into the nut. A, a graphite ferrule that's still okay to use looks like this. You can still kind of see that it's intact. This is what it looks like when it's brand new. And notice that it fits fairly snugly around the column when it's new. These things come in different sizes, so sometimes the hole might be too big. If so, you just need to get the right size graphite ferrule that has the appropriately sized hole already drilled in it. So this is still usable. When the, nut, when the graphite ferrule inside the nut looks like that, it looks like it's still got the conical shape, then it's still fine to use. Sometimes you can get 10, 20, even more um, uses out of a ferrule before they um, get damaged. Now when they get damaged, usually what happens is the ferrule falls apart inside the nut, so some of the graphite is still stuck in the nut, but the front part of the ferrule, the conical part, usually sticks in the fitting that you're removing the nut from. And that's the one that you have to be careful not to lose down in the oven because it could cause some problems if it contacts the oven heater. So you may need also to cut the column because anytime you shove the column through a graphite ferrule, it's likely that small little bits of graphite get stuck in the mouth of the column. Sometimes you can see them, sometimes not, but it's not good for the, the chromatography to have graphite in the column because molecules stick very strongly to graphite. So there's several ways to cut the column. The, the easiest way is to use a little triangle file. So you hold the, the column between your two fingers and you give a nice quick kind of a pull to the... and that makes a little nick in the column which you can then place directly over your fingernail and the column will break off beautifully clean like that. You really don't have to do anything else to it. 
you know, lately the column manufacturers are sending out this what they call a cutting wafer and it's got actually a little abrasive surface on one edge you have to look at it under a microscope to see that but you do it the same way you hold the the column between your fingers you give it a quick little slash with the abrasive disc and then you break it right over your fingernail otherwise they won't break you can you can you know you can't really break these columns unless you give it a deep score first